Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture. Today we are studying the choroidal neovascularization. In my previous video, I told you about the pathophysiology of age-related macular degeneration, both the dry AMD and the wet AMD. The hallmark of the wet AMD is actually the choroidal neovascularization, also called the CNV or the choroidal neovascular membrane, that is CNVM. The CNVM is nothing but it is a growth of the new vessels which are coming from the choroidal area and then they are entering into the retina through a break in the Brux membrane and then through the retinal pigment epithelium. The choroidal neovascularization is the commonest, uh, the commonest cause of the choroidal neovascularization is actually the age related macular degeneration and when it occurs with the AMD it is called the wet AMD or the exudative AMD. Apart from the age-related macular degeneration, there are a lot of causes which can cause a development of a choroidal neovascularization. Example, number one, we have high myopia. In high myopia or the pathological myopia, there is usually a chorioretinal atrophy in the posterior segment. And because of the chorioretinal atrophy, there will be some changes in the retinal pigment epithelium and the Brux membrane. And as I already told you in the pathophysiology of the wet ARMD that whenever there's a rip in the RPE or whenever there's a break in the Brux membrane, the underlying choroidal vessels are going to grow inside the retina through this break. And that is what is called as the choroidal neovascular membrane. Similarly, again, the presence of angioid streaks. Again, there is a break in the RPE Brux complex. Presumed ocular histoplasmosis syndrome. This can also uh, be associated with a CNVM. Choroidal rupture, as the name itself suggests, that there is a rupture post trauma. Uh, osteoma sometimes can also be associated with uh, uh, the choroidal neovascular membrane. Then there are other inflammatory causes, macular telangiectasias, and other idiopathic causes of CNVM. Now, what are the symptoms that patient uh, develops after development of a choroidal neovascular membrane? Now, a choroidal neovascular membrane is usually associated in the macular area and therefore the patient complains of a sudden or a gradual blurring of the central vision. A sudden loss of the central vision usually occurs when this choroidal neovascular membrane, because these are the vessels, these vessels when suddenly bleed into the subretinal area or the intraretinal space, that will cause a sudden loss or sudden blurring of the central vision. Apart from that, patient will have metamorphopsia. Now, what is meant by metamorphopsia? Usually, uh, this can also be tested usually on an amsler grid test. Okay, so in the amsler grid, usually the lines will look straight vertically and horizontally. However, if the patient has a choroidal neovascular membrane, the lines will look distorted to the patient. So this distortion of the straight line into wavy patterns is what is known as metamorphopsia. And this is seen in age-related macular degeneration, specifically when the macula is involved with the development of a choroidal neovascular membrane. Then the third thing what a patient is going to complain is of a central scotoma. So in the field of vision, there will be a development of a black spot like this. And that is called a scotoma. Since it's present in the central field of vision because of the involvement of the macula, it's called a central scotoma. Apart from that, the patient might also complain of slow recovery of visual function after exposure to bright light. And this happens because most of the cones which are associated with the bright light vision, that is a photopic vision, is located in the macula and when the macula gets involved there will be a problem in the visual recovery after exposure to bright light. Now after the symptoms let us talk about what are the signs that we see and what are the morphological presentation of CNVM. So how does the CNVM present to us when in the clinic when we look at the fundus or look at the retina. Now the CNVM can present as an RPE rip. So RPE's rip is nothing but that the retinal pigment epithelium which is present over the Brux membrane can sometimes develop a tear and then get separated and this tear is called ripping up of the RPE or the retinal pigment epithelium or the RPE rip. Other thing which can happen is that the vessels can grow from the Brux membrane into the retinal on the subretinal area and uh, sometimes they, uh, initially they will be growing below the retinal pigment epithelium so the retinal pigment epithelium will get raised and that is called a pigment epithelium detachment. Now over a period of time these vessels will start leaking into the subretinal space which is located between the neurosensory retina and the RPE. So 
in between that space there will be accumulation of the fluid which is leaking from these vessels and that is called a subretinal fluid apart from that the flu the vessels will leak and the fluid will then start going within the substance of the neurosensory retina that means within the different layers of the retina that is called an intraretinal fluid uh, formation these vessels can also bleed so that can develop the hemorrhage this hemorrhage can be again subretinal it can be intraretinal preretinal and sometimes can they can also bleed into the vitreous humor apart from that we know that vessels not only they bleed they can also uh, cause exudation and whenever there is exudation uh, there will be lipid deposition as well so you will have lipid deposition also associated with the choroidal neovascular membrane again it can deposit within the substance of the retina which is called intraretinal or below the neurosensory retina that means in between the neurosensory retina and the retinal pigment epithelium and that is called the subretinal lipid deposition now this lipid deposition hemorrhage and fluid sometimes can be so much that the neurosensory retina will get separated for a long um, over a long distance from the retinal pigment epithelium and that is called the exudative retinal detachment now finally you know that the end stage as i told you of the uh, cnvm can be scarring and fibrosis and it can form a disiform scar so this picture over here shows you the morphology of a cnvm a cnvm usually will look like a grayish greenish uh, patch like a uh, lesion in the macular area this grayish and greenish color is basically because the pigmentary changes which is occurring in the retinal pigment epithelium now in the first picture you can see this grayish greenish lesion and apart from the grayish greenish lesion you can uh, see that here yeah you can see that there are a lot of lipid deposits so these are the exudates okay that i was talking about so all these yellow color deposits are nothing but the exudation which are present around the boundary of this cnvm now in the second picture you can see that here again you have a lot of exudation and this is like extensive exudation apart from that you can see some amount of hemorrhage as well now in the third picture here you can see a lot of lots of hemorrhage this hemorrhage is maybe subretinal or interretinal hemorrhage and then some subsequently when you treat the cnvm it will it will get scarred out and this is entire thing is the glial tissue or the fibrotic tissue next is how do you classify the cnvm now in my video on the retina i told you the layers of retina which is very important for you to know to understand types of cnvm based upon the location of cnvm we know that there are 10 layers of retina and then again in my video on the normal anatomy of macula on oct i told you how the layers of retina will look on oct now for the purpose of this video we know that we have a retinal pigment epithelium here and we know that below that there is a brux membrane and then there's a choroid from the choroidal area the neovascular membrane are going to grow through the rpe now they are going to occupy different position either they are going to limit themselves below the rpe or they're going to cross the rpe and occupy a position above the surface of the rpe and sometimes the vessels are also going to grow from the retina towards the choroid right so based on this criteria we have classified the cnvm into three types we have type 1 cnvm in which the the choroidal neovascular membrane will grow but limit itself to below the RPE position. So that is called a sub-RPE CNVM. Now another name for the sub-RPE CNVM is the occult CNVM and uh, this is a classification given by the FFA. Okay. Next we have the type 2 CNVM. In type 2 CNVM, the choroidal neovascular membrane will cross the RPE and occupy a position in between the neurosensory retina and the RPE and that, that CNVM is called a subretinal CNVM. And on a fundus fluorescent angiography, such a CNVM is called the classic CNVM. Now type 3 CNVM is a retinal angiomatosis proliferance. So let us see what are all these. Now in type 1 as I told you the CNVM is located below the retinal pigment epithelium. So as you can see in this picture this is the retinal pigment epithelium the hyperreflected zone and you can see this is uh, getting updrawn into an irregular border uh, pigment epithelial detachment and there is this heterogeneous hyperreflectivity below this indicating that this is a fibrovascular PED 
and we know that the fibrovascular pd usually may be associated with cnvm and the hint here is the presence of this hyporeflective area black area which indicates that here there is a subretinal fluid so whenever there's a pd associated with the subretinal fluid it indicates that yes it, there might be a presence of cnvm as well a corresponding ffa will uh, usually live, reveal to you that this is a type 1 cnvm associated with an occult leak or an occult cnvm next we have the type 2 cnvm in type 2 cnvm as you can see that the the rp is located here and you have a hyper reflected uh, mass like this okay and this is present above the rp right and again it is associated with this subretinal fluid here and some amount of interretinal fluid also so this is a type 2 variety of cnvm and on an ffa that is fundus fluorescent angiography it will show a classic pattern of leakage then we have type 3 CNVM. Type 3 CNVM is also called the RAP lesion, that is RAP, also called the retinal angiomatosis proliferance. Now, in this retinal angiomatosis proliferance, usually you will have the vessels which are growing within the retina, and from the retina, they are going to enter uh, from, uh, through the RP, and then finally, they are going to anastomose with the choroid. So, that is called retinal angiomatosis proliferance. So this is uh, different from the classic teaching of the CNVM that the CNVM is coming from the choroid. However, in the retinal angiomatosis proliferance, the vessels are coming from the retina and then they are going, they are forming the anastomosis with the choroidal vessels. Okay. So, they are intraretinal in location with localized intraretinal hemorrhage on examination with the intraretinal fluid and exudation seen on OCD. So, this picture you can see there is a grayish lesion of course and there is fluid with exudation but in the center you can see the vessels dipping in inside the retina and this is an RAP lesion. Now, here you can see this multiple flat pigment epithelial detachment and usually in the initial stage here you can see this intraretinal area you can see a hyper reflective area and surrounded by that you can see some cystic changes so this is an early RAP lesion. RAP is usually located extra foveally because we know in the center in the fovea we have a foveal vascular zone, a zone which does not have any kind of blood vessels. So RAP lesions usually originate extra foveally, right? And then they are going to form a shunt vasculature originating from the retina and communicating with the deeper retinal, deeper choroidal neovascularization. Based on that, there are three stages of the RAP. Stage 1 in which there will be intraretinal neovascularization. Stage 2 is when the vascularization reaches subretinally and stage 3 is they cross the RP and reach the, uh, reach the choroid forming an anastomosis between the choroid and the retina.